Hi, welcome back to ingvid.com. I'm Adam. Today's lesson, we're going to look at business English. We're going to talk about the economy. Now, we're not going to get into too much detail. We're not going to get into economic theories, etc. What we're going to look at is some vocabulary that will help you read financial articles in newspapers or online or watch financial broadcasts on TV, CNN, Money Matters, etc. Things like that. So, we're going to look at all these words. We're going to start with GDP because everything somehow relates to GDP. Gross domestic product. What is this? This is the total value, the total monetary value of goods and services produced within a country. So, everything that the country produces from toilet paper to airplanes and services from massage to heart surgery, all the money that's made from these goods and services together adds up to the GDP. So, when we're talking about GDP, we're going to refer back to this expression when we're talking about some of these other words. So, first, let's look at fiscal. Fiscal basically means anything to do with money, anything to do with financial matters, especially when we're talking about taxes. Okay? So, when the most common thing you'll hear is fiscal year. So, when we're talking about a company's fiscal year, we're talking about is the beginning of its tax year to the end of its tax year. In some countries, everybody matches this to January to December. In other countries, you're allowed your fiscal year starts when you start your business, and then one year later is the end of your fiscal year. It's easier to match it to the calendar year. But a quarter. Now, you're going to always hear about prices and stocks and values going up or down over the last quarter or over the last two quarters. What is a quarter? It's basically three months. So, if you're talking about the first quarter of the year, you're talking about January, February, March. That's your first quarter. Your next three months, second quarter. Four quarters makes one year. Currency. I think everybody knows this word, but just in case. This is the money that is used in a country or a region. This is the monetary value that is ex used for exchanges, trades, investments, etc. In Canada, we use the Canadian dollar. In the US, they use the American dollar. Euro, in Europe, etc. A budget. A budget or to budget, it could be a noun or a verb, means to make a plan on how to spend a certain amount of money. So, for example, a government has this much money that they need to spend, or they have a plan that they want to spend this much money. Now, they want to spend a million dollars. I'm being very simple here. I'm not going to get into big numbers. They need to spend a million dollars to provide all the services that they need and to buy all the materials that they need to import, etc. If they are running on a deficit, that means that they need to spend more money than they have. They have to spend on things to bring in, uh, to run the country, but they don't have. So, if I need to spend a million dollars, but I only make the revenues of the country are only $900,000, then they will run on a $100,000 deficit. Okay? Surplus is the opposite. Surplus is when the government or any company, you don't have to apply this to a government, when you have more money than you need for the budget. So, if I need to spend a million dollars over the next year, but I have a million and a half, then I have half a million dollar surplus, which is always a good thing. Inflation, deflation. Inflation is when prices of goods and services go up, but wages stay the same. So, basically, the purchase power of the individual goes down. You have the same amount of money, but you can buy fewer things, or you can hire fewer people to do to have services for you. Deflation is the opposite. That's when prices go down and the value of your dollar or your currency goes up. Both situations are not good. A little bit of each is okay. Too much of each is bad for the economy. People think deflation is good because prices go down, but then Companies don't produce as much <clears throat> things because they're not making as much money. So, unemployment goes up. So, you have to be careful with both of them. Inflation, prices go too high, people can't afford things. 
deflation companies don't want to produce. Stagnation. Now, when we look at GDP, we talk about growth or decline. Growth means that GDP is growing. Decline means that uh, GDP is shrinking. Okay. Stagnation means that there's hardly any movement up or down. It means everything stays more or less the same. 1%, etc., that's still stagnation if it carries for a long time. A, a government wants to make sure that the economy is in growth, that the economy grows. If it's stagnant, means it's not moving, that's also bad for the economy. Next, actually, you know what? I'm going to jump here a little bit. I'll come back to these guys. Recession. Recession is different from stagnation. Recession means that the economy is in decline. Now, usually, if the economy is in decline for two quarters, consecutive quarters, means one quarter after another quarter, then people, the government or people or economists consider the economy to be in recession. If the recession continues for a long time, maybe a couple of years, some, in some places it's only one year or even less, then you have a depression, which is a very big uh, decline in the, in the economy, in the GDP. Next, we're going to talk about credit. Credit is the ability to borrow money. Okay, so for example, you need to buy a car, you can buy a car and pay for it later. Why? Because the bank will give you the money to buy the car and then slowly you pay them back. If they give you $10,000 to buy the car, you have a $10,000 debt. Notice I don't pronounce the B, debt. Okay, debt means owing. You owe money to someone, usually the bank. A credit rating means how much or how little the, the banks will give you. Now, of course, there's also credits between credit ratings and credits between countries, between companies, between banks and individuals. So this basically tells you how much you can borrow. If you, if you have a very bad credit rating, means nobody will give you any money. You have bad credit. Next, bubble. You might hear this word often used, especially when we're talking about houses. We have a housing bubble. What does this mean? It means that the prices of the houses, in this particular case, are growing, 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 growing. There's no real reason that they should be growing. It's not like there's suddenly a huge demand or the product is so much better. But prices are growing and they're growing quickly for no particular reason. And then suddenly they pop or they burst. So a bubble grows and then it bursts. So people are always worried when a bubble gets too big or lasts for too long that the burst is coming and then people start panicking and the economy is affected very much. Lastly, when we're talking about generally about a good economy or a bad economy, we say boom or bust. Boom, very good, growing. Bust, bad, shrinking. Okay? Boom up, bust down. So these are very general words that you need to know. Again, you're not going to go get your MBA with these words, okay? But you can read articles, you can watch programs about financial matters and get a little bit of better understanding. And the more of these words you learn, the easier it will be to study business, economics, commerce, etc. If you have any questions, please go to ingvid.com and in the comments section you can ask about these words. There's also a quiz that you can try out to test your knowledge. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you again soon. Bye-bye.